Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the ACAC Virtual College Exploration Program um, for all Pennsylvania students. Um, for this evening, we are going to have the um, camera and microphone off for participants, but the panelists, you'll be able to interact with them with the um, Q&A button to type your questions. Um, this record will be recorded and placed online after at packac.org slash virtual. And I did introduce myself and I'm David Weiss, board of the Director of College Counseling at um, Winchester Third Street School. And with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Jennifer from the College of Worcester. Jen, all yours. Great, thanks so much, David. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Winge. I'm the Dean of Admissions uh, at the College of Worcester. And we are so excited to um, have a chance to connect with our Pennsylvania colleagues and families and students who may be exploring Worcester as one of their college options or want to learn a little bit more tonight. Um, I'm originally from Pennsylvania and I've traveled those schools for many, many years. So it's near and dear to my heart to be here tonight to represent Worcester and, and to talk a little bit more about this special place. In fact, um, it's probably even more special when you have current students on the call. So Naswa, I'm so glad you unmuted yourself um, because you're probably the star of the show, not me. I want, I want to make sure that you can share your story and um, share examples throughout tonight's session. Um, so can you take a minute just to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Naswa Labi. I am a senior at the College of Worcester. I am originally from Tamagana, but I grew up in multiple countries. Um, on campus, I'm part of a lot of student organizations. I am part of the African Student Union and also the BW, the Black Women's Organization, but I'll talk more about those later on throughout the presentation. Excellent. Well, I know you have a lot to share, so lots of things going on right now, too. And just as a reminder, what David shared, we want you to interact with us through the Q&A function, so you can just see where those are available. I'm sure you're all familiar with Zoom now, but just notice the differences between the mobile device and the computer laptop. We'll do our best to um, answer those questions as we talk, but we're going to make sure that we provide time at the end of the session as well um, to answer those questions. So please keep them coming. So I, I just wanted to start with some baseline facts um, just to make sure we're all on the same page of who Worcester is. Um, of course, Worcester is a liberal arts and sciences college and we just have about um, 2000 students on our campus. It's a fully undergraduate institution. And that size, that uh, just, not, uh, just over 2000 is very intentional. You know, we really believe that that's the ideal size uh, to provide the type of residential and academic experiences that best prepare students for life after graduation. So it, that's very intentional and we're actually at our capacity right now. We've seen really great years of enrollment at Worcester. I think what we're most proud of though is the diversity of those students. I, I think that is a cornerstone of Worcester's mission is making sure that we provide studies to all and that we are committed to access and diversity of thought um, and experiences. And so you can see that in the makeup of our students. So as you, as you can see, we have about a third of our students from the state of Ohio, um, but the rest are coming from all over the world. We have nearly every state um, represented as well as uh, 65 different countries. So that, I think that's pretty impressive. And in fact, Pennsylvania is our um, second most represented state um, on, on our campus. So it's good to know that folks are traveling across the border to attend school at Worcester. Um, I think it's also pretty impressive to know the reach in terms of where, you know, how students are discovering Worcester and where they're coming from. In just our application pool alone last year for this, you know, the current first year students that are here, we have over 135 countries represented in that applicant pool. So that just gives you an idea of Worcester's recognition across the world, um, but also how students are finding us and finding that it's a, a really impressive fit for them. We wanted you to just visualize what campus is. Um, I think that sometimes folks see this map and they're like, whoa, it's a pretty big campus. And it is, I think for a school of 2000, uh, it's pretty expansive. It's about 240 acres. What you're looking at right now is really the centralized campus. It's about 100 acres, so very walkable, although you'll see a lot of skateboards and bicycles too. But I think most folks will find it's pretty walkable. We also have then um, you know, hundreds of acres of athletic fields. We also have a nine hole golf course. 
Um, so lots of green space for our students. I think it's important to know that you'll experience all the different seasons as you do in Pennsylvania. The weather is not much different here. We actually encourage the snow to arrive and NASA is going to share you a story later why that is. Um, but we love our seasons here. We also know that when families come back from their campus tour, they tend to ask again, okay, remind me how many students come to Worcester or attend Worcester? And I say, well, it's about 2,000. And they're really kind of shocked because they say it feels much larger of a campus, like for a medium-sized school, maybe more for 8,000 students. Um, but also they feel this vibe or energy that they say makes it feel a little bit larger too. So I do love that um, our environment mirrors a larger institution, but you still get all of the wonderful benefits of being at a smaller school. Okay, so Naswa, if you wouldn't mind unmuting, Share a little bit about your own experience on campus. Where are some of your favorite spots to hang out? Maybe perhaps where you're living this year, and I'll point that out to folks um, yeah. while you talk. So um, right now I'm living in Holden Hall. This is my third year living here. I really like the location it is on campus because I have most of my classes in Morgan Hall and it's a like three minute walk and it's right next to Lowry Center. So because I don't like the cold, I like to move very quickly between <laughs> buildings during winter. And so having a, a dorm that's really close to most of the buildings I need to go to is very it's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, I really good. appreciate the location of Holden. But um, when it's warm outside and I have like a little, I have some time to hang out with my friends. We like to go and hammock outside, um, especially toward at the behind Shida. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so like around here somewhere. On, yeah, there's lots of trees on campus. Okay. So it's really <laughs> cool to just spend time outside hammocking or picnicking but when it gets cold um that's not always possible so sometimes the pit inside Lowry has always has a fire going and there's always really comfortable chairs around it sometimes people have events where they'll have hot chocolate or s'mores or coffee yeah. um, so there's always like some form of activity going on there it's really warm and cozy um, and to study, I usually spend a lot of time in the Timken Science Library. It's really quiet and it's a place for very quiet study and people, it's like pin drop silence in there, <laughs> which <laughs> I really like because I like when I'm doing homework, I like to focus on what I'm doing. So there's lots of different places on campus um, to hang out. That's awesome. And I do love that the libraries all have different levels of like noise level, like, you know, those, the, the layers of um, collaboration. So Timken's known as the quiet library, but then if you want to do more collaborative study and hang out and, and be able to talk a little bit more, you have the two other libraries too. So it's yeah. pretty cool that you have some good options within the library scene. Yeah. Good. Thanks for that. That's really helpful. Um, so with an average class size of about 18 students, you know that you're going to have access to your professors. So that's no question. You know, our professors, you're their number one priority. They, you know, I think we attract um, professors that are very good teachers. They understand that they're going to be mentoring and advising you throughout the way. Um, and so that's what we mean by a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Um, you know, your classes are going to be interactive, they're going to be engaging, it's going to be very rare when you kind of sit back in a lecture setting. Um, that, that exists, I'm sure, at times, but I think most of the time you're going to be part of the learning and part of the discussion and getting to know your classmates in different ways that way. But I know that sometimes it's kind of abstract to students on the call of, well, what, what's the benefit of a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio? So Nasa, well, could you just share in your own words what you think the benefits are to the kind of environment and that, that ratio between our professors and our students? I think it has multiple benefits. So for example, when you're um, doing your homework and you might have a few problems or you're struggling to understand certain content in class, having a small class size means that you're all, you always have the opportunity to interact with your professor in a very personal way. They office, professors also hold office hours multiple times during the week, but if you can't make those office hours, they will schedule time out of their day to see you and to help you. And um, even if it's like outside academics, if you want help 
with connecting with alumni or connect finding job and internship opportunities off campus, professors are able to know exactly who you are as a person and what your interests are because of small class sizes, they really do get to know you and they're able to help you with um, specifically what information you're trying to find, whether it's academic or professional or sometimes if you just need someone to talk to because you're having a rough week, professors are also there for that. That's great. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. So share with me one of your favorite professors and why Naswa. Well, my favorite professor is my IS advisor, Professor Long. Um, so I really lucked out there. Um, she is, she, I only got to meet her my junior year of college. And she teaches, she focuses on um, personal finance and feminist economics, which is my favorite type of economics. And just having her and going for her classes, I've learned so much. She's very passionate about what she teaches. And she's also helped me like connect with alumni outside of school. She's really broadened my understanding of what economics is and what economic research can look like. That's awesome. She sounds great. She is. <laughs> good. good. Um, and so I think just one last point to make, and that's that last bullet there. You know, we are intentionally um, an un, a fully undergraduate institution. You're going to talk with some schools this week, you know, this week and into the coming weeks with this um, wonderful opportunity PACEC is doing that have both graduate and undergraduate opportunities. And I, and I think the benefit of being at a fully undergraduate institution is that access and that attention and not having sort of to compete for time and space uh, with graduate programs, but it also means that all of your classes are going to be taught um, by professors and by full-time faculty. Um, um, but what is interesting about Worcester is if you take a tour of campus or maybe even NASA will bring this up, but sometimes you'll hear students say, well, my TA and my econ class or my TA and my FYS class, and I'm thinking, Wait, we don't have teaching assistants at Worcester. That would be at a at a graduate and an undergraduate um, combined school. And I think it's important to know that um, teaching assistants at Worcester are pretty unique. These are upper class students that have been asked and selected by our faculty to um, help to mentor and support um, students taking a particular class of theirs. So it's a wonderful opportunity for students who might be thinking about teaching on a collegiate level or maybe just education in general. But it's also just a, a great leadership opportunity to be able to mentor um, students and about a subject that you might be just as passionate about um, as the professor. So just one nice example of the leadership opportunities on campus. Okay, so I know why you're here tonight. You want to know what makes Worcester distinctive when you think about all of the other schools that you might be considering. And especially if you've started to narrow your search to schools like us in terms of our size, and being a residential liberal arts college, you know, we start to look a lot of like. So our goal tonight is to make sure you know what we think helps Worcester stand out and what those distinctions are. And then of course, if that resonates for you, then we hope that you continue to research us. So these are the three messages that we're gonna just touch upon tonight. That Worcester is America's premier college for mentored research and what that means and why that should be important to you that we're a global campus and a very thriving campus community, a pretty busy place. Um, and we're really proud of that and very intentional about that experience. And then it's not gonna be something that I think is gonna make or break your college decision, but one that you should consider. And that is the greater community that's around the schools and why we think the city of Worcester is just a wonderful asset for our students. So let's first talk about that mentored research and what we even mean by that. I think, you know, a lot of students, when I say the word research, they immediately think about what you see here, you know, being in a lab, wearing the white coats, <laughs> working with beakers, and, and yes, absolutely, that can be one type of research and one that is happening all the time at Worcester and working in our life sciences building and in our biochemistry and chemistry buildings. So we do have a lot of scientific research that's happening. But I do think it's important to know that when you're in college, research can take many forms. And at Worcester, it can be more creative, like you see here in art, um, or perhaps in music, um, or English with creative writing. It can be more analytical, um, or you know, um, working within mechanical engineering or computer science working in political science on current issues that are happening in the world today. So I think it's really important to know 
that research can take many forms, and it can also be creative expression. Here at Worcester, every student, not just a certain um, major or academic program, or perhaps like an honors program, but every student at Worcester will take on at least one major project um, where they do research um, alongside a professor uh, and mentor. And that, that mentored research experience will happen at least one time in your senior year. And we're actually very intentional. It's built into our curriculum and it's called independent study. And that's what mentioned her IS advisor. So the students like to shorten it to IS. Um, what I love about this word or the, the, the name for our research experience at Worcester, independent study, when you think about it, um, it might be the worst name for one of the best experiences that you can have as an undergrad. Because even though it might be an independent idea that you have of what you want to study or take on as a project, you're never alone doing it. It's really a class of one where you're working one on one with a professor who's just as excited about that topic as you are and is learning as you go along the way, but is there to support you every step of the way. So we're really, really proud of that process. Um, independent study is one of the classes of the four that you'll take in the fall semester of your senior year and then also in the spring semester. So it's built right in. It's not something extra that you have to think about. It's built right into your, your classes and, and the way that you're going to manage your time. Um, and so I think a, a, an initial question that we get from the audience is always like, well, wait a minute, do I have to wait till my senior year to do research? And that's not, um, that's not the case. There's going to be lots of opportunities to get involved hands-on within your departments that you're exploring and you're interested in, whether it's on campus or off. But know that this is the way that we make sure everybody has that. And then it's also good to know that we're not just going to throw something at you in your senior year to take on without very little guidance. In fact, we've built our curriculum where each year, starting in your first semester, your first year at Worcester, you're taking classes and having experiences that help expose you to disciplines and activities and interests within research, um, within different programs that may interest you, um, helping you understand what research looks like in economics versus what it may look like in English, um, and then also understanding really how to tackle such a large project and really how to um, manage that, um, and also how to communicate it, you know, becoming a more effective and prolific writer and understanding the basics of research. So we're really proud of this step-by-step -step experience that students do. So it's truly a four-year plan where we start with a first-year seminar experience. Sophomores have, again, more intensive writing experiences, but also perhaps a sophomore um, apprenticeship opportunity where they take on research that's ongoing with a professor in a department. And then in the junior year, once you've declared your major, you can tackle a semester-long project. So Nathwa, since you're in, you're, you're in your senior year, would you mind going back in time a little bit and just share a little bit about your first year seminar experience? Like tell us like how that helped to sort of set the stage for Worcester. Um, so my first year seminar class was about colors. And um, essentially we were looking at the history of different colors, their cultural meanings, as, and also the process of making colors. So my first research opportunity on campus was actually learning how to make paint by myself from everyday objects. Wow. And I made yellow paint from egg yolks. <laughs> and it was, cool. really, it was really cool. I didn't, like you said, the, there's so many different ways in which research can look like. And I didn't know that research could, in, could be integrated into such a creative and fun um, project. Um, and since then, I've also been able to do more research that's aimed towards my major and also research in other areas, um, maybe areas that I'm not super, I've never engaged with, but it's been definitely a great experience to try my hands out in different studies and different um, majors. Yeah. Yeah. And what did you do for your junior um, experience? Did you have any type of research opportunity or time with a professor in your junior year? Yes. So in my junior year, I did my junior independent study, which um, I decided to carry on into my senior independent study. And I worked with my favorite professor, <laughs> Professor Long. Okay, and good. 
we did around the time when I was doing my junior independent study was also around the time of COVID. Um, so it was very interesting to see the way our dynamic moved from seeing each other in person multiple times a week um, and having, like you said, like a one on one class where she explained and broke down things to me to moving online where we had to find different ways of moving that around. But professors are very accommodating and very um, adaptable to whatever your needs are as a student, whatever you need at each step of the research process. And that gave me a great foundation for my senior independent study because now we already have a great working relationship. So we understand how, what each other needs and what, um, she understands how I work as a student and what kind of deadlines and structure I like. And I also understand the level of work that she likes and she has very high standards. So <laughs> I also know like what she wants, um, what kind of work she's expecting from me. And right now it's like a very interesting process where sometimes in meetings we just theorize about my topic and we just sit down and brainstorm That's and right. get articles whereas other times we're literally doing math for two hours straight <laughs> so it can go from everything and that's like what I'm thoroughly enjoying about it is being in control of what I'm learning and when I'm learning it that's awesome what what a great way to ex to explain it that way in terms of that self-control too I love that <laughs> so and so I think that helps to answer this question of then why is this important, right? Like why, why come to Worcester and, and know that at some point you're going to take on such an extensive project? And so I think it's really important to know that when you read about what employers and what graduate schools and professional schools, really those employers are missing from college graduates is this um, adaptability and flexibility and this um, and strong and effective communication skills and having someone who can, you know, really evolve as their job evolves and the needs and demands of that particular organization or company. And that's exactly what the senior IS does. That, that's exactly what it prepares you to do. It helps you plan. It helps you research. It helps you to analyze, be creative, um, put things down on paper and be able to articulate and be a persuasive writer and communicator. Um, and then be able to adapt and even, you know, manage some stress along the way. I know NASA, you can, you can share those feelings of that. We were just talking about NASA was a week. Um, it's going to be busy with lots of deadlines and things happening. So that's part of reality in, in everyday life. So we're really proud that we can help students tackle something like that, that prepares them very easily for a graduate thesis and moving on to graduate school, but certainly for um, everyday work as well, which we're really proud of. So this is a great picture that um, is one of our wonderful traditions. And so now, so I know we've, we've talked a little bit about your IS. Why don't you share with folks just so they can hear it um, in full what your topic is, you know, what you're studying right now as an economics major. And then if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about what this picture means that we're looking at right now. So I'm looking at gender-based price discrimination, which is essentially when the same product is charged to um, women higher than it is to men. And I'm looking specifically at personal care goods. Mm -hmm. So like razors, um, shower gel, like everyday items. And I'm looking at it from a consumer side. So I'm looking at how people um, justify participating in it and why like as consumers, we haven't completely rejected it and how people react and feel about um, this type of price discrimination. And so it's going to be very interesting. I'm going to, I'm planning on doing some form of experiment to see how mm -hmm. people react to things, which is um, quite different from what a lot of other economics majors do. Right. And I'm very excited to try it out. Um, and in this picture, so this is um, outside of the library and when you finish your IS, so you have up until March, um, right the first Monday after spring break to submit your IS. And after you do it, you get a little pin that has a number on it that says finished and the I and the S is capitalized and you get a Tootsie Roll. And there's these giant inflatable Tootsie Rolls that people <laughs> like to hold and take pictures with outside the library with their friends to just celebrate this accomplishment. Um, I've been to many IS submissions where people have had cakes, and people have had music going, people have prepared speeches and sent out invites. So people take it very seriously. Oh, because yeah. It's a monumental <laughs> event and it's such a day to be celebrated where all of your friends come together and you can celebrate this huge, the finishing of this huge research paper that you've been working on for like six months. Absolutely. 
Amazing. Oh, and I just love that your IS is very interdisciplinary. I mean, you're pulling in psychology, sociology, women's, you know, yeah. and gender study. Like, I'm just really impressed. So I'm excited to see how things go and certainly excited to celebrate with you. And I'm, I'm hoping this we can do this this year in the year of pandemic um, that we can celebrate with Tootsie Rolls outside of the library. So that'll be a lot of fun. We'll find <laughs> our unique ways to do it now. So if we can't do this. <laughs> yeah, we'll find a way. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, I know it's easy for any school to say they're the best at something, but it's really helpful when they have other people um, outside of their organization and across different industries that say the same thing. So I think it's really important that organizations like Gallup and the Fisk Guide and Princeton Review and here, as you can see with US News and World Report, um, these professionals within the industry are also saying that Worcester is best um, at this idea of senior research, um, both as a capstone experience, but uh, you know, in, in terms of the process of doing undergrad research. And in fact, there's been this survey that US News has done for, well, as you can see, since 2002, where they've asked presidents and provosts and deans of colleges and universities across the country who does undergraduate research best and who does senior capstone um, and that type of experience best. And it's great to know that, um, you know, there are only two schools that have made both lists every year and that's Worcester and Princeton University. And so we love being the fully undergraduate institution, that residential liberal arts college that is best known for that, that experience for sure. Okay, so you've heard me say the word mentoring a lot, I think, and NASA has talked about her favorite professor and the accessibility um, within the classes. And so I think it's important to also just mention that you have these wonderful relationships with professors, but the opportunity to connect and um, experiment in different career fields and to build that resume and figure out what that next step is, that can happen outside of the classroom as well. And so we have this whole center um, that is developed and works very cohesively together in different offices um, that ensures these opportunities as early as your first year. And so that is APEX, and that stands for the Academic Planning and Experiential Learning Center. And um, as you can see, there are a variety of offices that are a part of this, and they work very intentionally together to help really create connections for you. So you may go in saying, Hey, you know, like, I just want to sit down with an academic advisor and just kind of talk about why I'm undecided. <laughs> you know, I'm still like toying with different departments. And through that discussion, you've learned that maybe, you know, it would be really good to do an internship in, let's say, pre-vet medicine. And so, okay, let's walk over then to the, um, you know, experiential learning and community engagement office, and they will help you determine if you can shadow and work with one of the local vets in the area. Um, and so it's these types of connections that I think are so important. Um, Naswat, can you share a little bit about how you've taken advantage of APEX while you've been here? Yeah, APEX is one of my favorite places on campus. I could talk <laughs> about them all day. Um, I So in my freshman year, um, the way I use APEX is very different than how I use APEX now as a senior. So I, when I first came to Worcester, I was so excited to just be a college student that I packed my schedule with so much. I was busy all the time, but I was not managing my time well either. And so I went to APEX and they literally helped me break down each hour of my day so that I knew when I was eating, sleeping, hanging out with friends, doing homework. Um, and that really did help me to accomplish all my dreams and like well, all my goals and things that I wanted to do on campus but also have time to like you know rest and just enjoy being on being a college student and I also wanted to work on campus but I didn't have a resume and I didn't know who to talk to or how to um, go about finding the resources to get a job um, on campus and also during the summer off campus or like an internship and I went to Apex and they helped me to not only write a resume but they also showed me all the resources and websites I needed to go to to search for opportunities they helped me get in contact with alumni um, and Apex also also holds lots of like events that are catered towards either a specific um, job type or maybe a specific major. They do a lot of collaborations with 
um, departments. So you'll get to have talks with people that are doing research in um, your area of study, or you'll have like a panel where you can talk to different people from a variety of different fields that are all that either graduated from Worcester or that did your same major or that share some form of common interest with you. So Apex has been, a, it's definitely like a one-stop shop for almost all your needs as a student. Um, and now as a senior, I'm preparing for finding a job after college. And so I have a standing meeting with um, one of the workers at Apex and she essentially each week we tailor what I need. Um, and sometimes she helps me with interview prep, other times it's with finding a job and how to like search through LinkedIn. So yeah, That's it's nice. they're really great at giving you the resources that you need. Yeah, you have t taken a lot of uh, advantage of it. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly why it's there. So I'm glad you shared all of those examples for sure. Good. You're on the right track for sure now. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so when you combine Apex and you combine these wonderful classroom experiences, and, that, and then of course that senior project that we've talked about, it's good to know that all of that hard work pays off. Um, knowing that the majority of our students are either in their top graduate program um, or in a, a work um, um, position that they're really enjoying that's related to what they studied um, within about six months of graduation. So we're really proud of that, that, that outcome that you see um, and that, that students are so proud of. So that's really um, helpful to know that all of that work is worth it. So that second point that I mentioned is this idea that we're really um, very intentional about being a global campus and a thriving community. So we recognize that it's incredibly important, especially now, um, to bring together multiple perspectives and experiences and ideas to the table when it comes to your, your, learn, you know, your college learning and your educational experience. So we are very intentional about how we bring folks together from all over the world, whether you're coming from a, a, a small farm town to the big cities to obviously um, students with dozens of different faiths and cultures and perspectives. That's all part of central to our mission and part of the everyday experience that you're going to have both in the classroom and out. We have 17% of our student body represented by international students. Go NASWA, right? You know, so she represents that part of that um, population. Um, and we are actually Worcester's most, uh, I'm sorry, Ohio's most international campus. And we rank 19th among all uh, liberal arts colleges in the country. So again, we're recognized for um, how we bring folks together from all over the world. We also um, really do have a commitment um, to helping students understand the importance of having diverse perspectives and really teaching anti-racism. And I think this is just a, a slide we inserted just to make sure you understand that um, we have, um, in light of recent events and, and what's happening across our world, uh, we want students to know that they're coming to a place that is welcoming and always, always um, having more um, of those difficult conversations and, and finding ways to improve its own campus community and to improve beyond the campus community. So our current president, Sarah Bolton, just you know, this summer reaffirmed this by stating that Worcester stands against racism in all of its forms and continuing to learn in different ways of being anti-racist in all of the work that we do. And this is just a fun picture of one of the ways our students do them, you know, our activists themselves. Um, uh, two years ago, we had a sit-in where students took over the administration building in Galpin Hall to really, you know, um, support our Black students and their Black student community, saying that they wanted those students to have more support across campus. And it's pretty impressive how that, that conversation continues, but how progress has continued since that. There are other wonderful ways that students um, show their activism and are engaged, um, you know, beyond just the campus itself. Here's a picture of um, last year's Worcester climate strike that they participated in. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that was part of, I think, who we are as a student body as well. Um, we also know how important it is um, to get off campus and to have those global experiences. And I know that that's a little bit different right now um, with what we're handling with and managing with the pandemic. But the goal is to get back to a situation where you can take advantage of our off-campus experiences this is just a picture of one student who was involved in a New York Times uh, democracy forum that was hosted in Athens. We've actually had two students in a row back to back um, be represented there. Um, and so students have an opportunity to get off campus both in, this, in the country but beyond 
Um, we have 60 different countries that are represented in our study abroad opportunities. So that's that traditional semester, year long or summer um, semester away. So lots of opportunities there. We also have what we call Worcester Trek programs where classes um, will occur in the spring semester. And then that class together will travel with the professor or professors who taught that class and travel between anywhere between two to six weeks after the spring semester ends. And it's a wonderful way for our students to graduate from Worcester with multiple international experiences, um, if that's of interest um, to them and, and an opportunity for them to get off campus and to learn and experience a different culture. Some of those TREK programs, some past ones are England, Thailand, India, and Greece. So I can't wait to see what's coming up next once we can start to travel again. So that's what I know the other thing is just being active and engaged on campus. And so I just wanted to share some of those statistics. I know we're, we're getting close to the end of our time here with the, the PACEC presentation, but could you share a little bit, um, uh, some examples of those things that you're involved in, or perhaps maybe, you know, others that, you know, friends are involved in that I think are unique or distinct to Worcester? Yeah, so there's a variety of different types of organizations on campus. So we have lots of acapella groups, and I'm actually part of the only competitive acapella group, Scots and Harmony, and that's a picture of us right there. Last year, we <laughs> had the opportunity to go to competition and actually compete, um, and it was great because the all of the deans showed up to support us, and President Bolton as well. Um, there are also lots of sports and um, sport clubs and intramural sports. So if you're interested in being a lot more active, um, that's also an option. There's a Quidditch team. Um, I am too scared to play Quidditch, but it's very <laughs> to watch them play. Um, there's also a women's rugby team that does really well. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's lots of also identity-based organizations like mm -hmm. the Queer People of Color, um, QSU, there's Lat Latinas Unidas, um, the African Student Union, Black Women's Organization, there's so many, I could just list them. Um, so no matter what you're interested in um, participating in or what activities or clubs you like to be a part of outside of um, class, there is definitely an avenue for that. And you're also not restricted to doing one Part, one organization like I'm in almost 10 I think I get emails for so many organizations and there's no pressure to go for all the meetings but you're also allowed to just like participate in multiple different things and allow like develop your various interests so it's pretty cool <laughs> there's always something on campus to do yeah yeah absolutely I know this afternoon they had like a stem uh, clubs uh, orientation like the stem bash or something as they called it so it was kind of fun that they found a nice way to socially distance but also get to know the different stem clubs and organizations so, yep always even on a sunday afternoon there's something going on so yeah students so. are being very creative with finding ways to still have student activities but like in virtual or like socially distant ways that's true and, and it, you have to get creative for sure <laughs> yeah so part of that thriving community is also the ways that I think our students, our alumni, our faculty and staff really get together and celebrate this, these traditions that have lasted ge over generations. So I, I thought we would just mention two quick ones and then I know we need to move on, but my favorite um, happens to be during the home football games. And um, at the beginning of the game, before things get started, um, the whole team will line up on the hill that is above um, the field area and arm to arm, they'll be locked in, ready to walk down. But what makes it unique is also our bagpipers and our drum corps are, are there with them. And the bagpipers actually lead the way, as you can see, there's also one of the um, football representatives wave, waving the Worcester flag. And they start slowly playing bagpipe music and moving down, but then all of a sudden they'll break line and they rush onto the field and they go through um, our 130 member uh, Worcester marching band, which as you can see are in kilts. Um, and it's just a wonderful tradition that I think um, illustrates our, our community and how it's so collaborative um, that you see the athletics and the uh, music community together in one on the hill, but it's a pretty fierce looking um, scene and vision to see um, that whole team run run onto the field. So that's my favorite one. What about you, Naswa? 
My favorite is when we get to fill up the arch. So um, on campus, Cal Call is where it like the large academic building that's it's like in the right in the middle of campus. And when it gets cold and we have enough snow, all the students, there's an email that's sent out and all the students show up to fill up the arch. And essentially the goal is to block all of the doors so that we can't have class. And however, um, since Worcester started, we've gotten more and more buildings. And so we're not able to just fill up the arch and not have class. So it's a pretty cool experience. You see lots of people from all around campus coming together to just dip, just fill up the arch, like one goal, and there's lots of music and lots of activity. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a great scene for sure. I'm usually sleeping by the time it's happening, but I, <laughs> I did get to see it a couple of years ago and it was pretty impressive. Yeah. Okay, so our last point out of those three is our city of Worcester. So I'll just mention really quickly that um, we understand that you're not going to make or break that decision based on the town, but it should be important to you. And when you look at schools like Worcester, we tend to be situated in more remote areas. Um, and so I love that we're a town of 30,000. Um, we're an hour away from a major city with Cleveland, about an hour and a half from the state capital. But really, most importantly, is that we have this vibrant downtown um, and also an uptown that provides the amenities that I think students that are coming from bigger regions um, are happy to see. So if you want your Chipotle fix or, you know, you want to study at Starbucks or need to shop at Kohl's or Dick's Sporting Goods, we have that. And it's just a bus ride away if you don't have your own transportation. It's free to jump on the local bus. Um, but you also can walk downtown and take advantage of locally owned shops. Um, we are the county seat. Um, so there's wonderful opportunities for service learning and um, the educational system, the arts community. And as you can see here, we have two major hospital systems in Worcester alone, the Cleveland Clinic, as well as the Worcester Community Hospital. So lots of wonderful ways, not only to entertain yourself and get off campus and shop and hang out, but also probably more importantly, you have opportunities to engage in service learning and internships during the um, school year where you don't have to wait till a break or the summer to do so. So um, know that you have that just within um, you know, minutes of campus as well, which you're really happy about. So that's Worcester. I know we're at the end of our of our time, but um, Nasma and I were um, so happy to have a chance to connect with all of you, and, and certainly those of you that are going to watch the recording, um, we're happy to help in any way um, as you continue to research Worcester. So we wanted to leave you our emails should you want to reach out to us directly, especially Nasma with her questions. Ask her how her IS is going, how that research project is going. Um, I would love to see prices go down on my razors and deodorant. So thanks, Naswa. Bring it, bring, bring it on. Um, but we're really glad to have you all here. And thanks, David, as, a, as our PACAC representative for allowing Worcester to jump in. Um, but yeah, it looks like we didn't have any questions from the group tonight. But as I said, feel free to follow up with us at another time. Great. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thanks for get a small a short survey on the way out and again the recordings will be posted online um, pretty soon excellent all right have a good night good night everyone thank you